Hello, nerds. Welcome to your new favorite pop culture podcast. It's the Post Credit Show. I'm your host, Loosh, and this week we're going to do something a little different. Lockie and I have decided this week that we're going to have the week off. We went to a wedding last night, and we are both probably feeling a little less than what we'd like to admit right now. So uh, we're going to share with you a really exciting interview that we did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, We are talking to what you probably regard as a a bit of an Australian legend. You've probably seen this man in Home and Away. You may have even seen him in All Saints. If you haven't seen him in that, you've probably seen him in 2010's Australian horror movie, The Reef. Or maybe even alongside Kate Winslet, Judy Davis, Liam Hemsworth and Hugo Weaving in 2015's The Dressmaker. Amidst the furor of 2008's most publicized court case and one of the most prominent stories in Australian history, Mr. Guyton Grantley rose to prominence for his portrayal of the notorious Australian underworld figure Carl Williams in the television series Underbelly. Grantley's gripping performance garnered widespread acclaim, especially amidst the backdrop of Williams' court case, captivating audiences, not just in Australia, but worldwide with his nuanced portrayal of the complex character, Carl Williams. Today, we get to hang out with Guyton and we get to ask the questions that you want to hear. Now, Guyton was joining us from a, a cute little country town in the middle of Italy. So make sure you jump into uh, jump onto YouTube, uh, look up the post credit show and look out for this interview because you'll actually get to see uh, Guyton talking directly to us from the most quaint of places in the world, which is a far cry from what Guyton was used to when he was here in Australia. Uh, but buckle up. Enjoy the interview. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe the post credit show on all social media platforms. And uh, tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell your mum I said hi. No fucking worries. Yeah, there you there go. Is. You're so Australian, mate. You're awesome. <laughs> we love it. So, Guyton, you were um, you were born in Brisbane. I am Brizzy boy, born and bred, Brisbane oh. land, San Fran Briscoe. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So going up Bruce in Brisbane. Oh, yeah, oh, I'm trying to remember. Everyone, everyone knows Bruce Vegas. So my yeah, Bruce Brisbane Vegas. Man. I grew up yeah. in the Gold Coast for a bit. Um, oh, yeah. So going up in Brizzy, just a quick, just, we all got to know this. As an Australian to another Aussie, we got to know. Who do you go for in the rugby league or who do you go for in the AFL? The Broncos and the Lions. Yeah. Okay. Interviews over. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 no, we're and the Reds. <laughs> Well, um, just very quickly. Sorry, Gordon, we just got to, yeah, we're, um, we're two poor shark supporters, mate. <laughs> no, that's fine. I've got a good friend, Brendan Cow, who yes. is, uh, you know, a diehard shark supporter. Yes, yep, yep, oh, yep. Cool. Nah, it. awesome, man. So, <laughs> growing up in Brisbane, you know, playing rugby union as a kid, um, and then you went to acting. How, how did you, how did you get into acting? What made you want to go down that path? Uh, look, I've always, I'd always enjoyed performing. Um, I think it kind of started when I was about six, and I was in grade yep. one, and I did a little, I did a little puppet play for my my class. Like I just drew some pictures on a piece of paper and stuck it on the back of a pencil with a sticky tape, and I did a little kind of play, and um, and the kids really loved it. And I kind of, I, re- I think that that's when I realised that I. We had the ability to entertain people and that, like, I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know, mum, I did a lot of speech and drama when I was just out of school, just growing up, like doing a Steadfords and things like that. And um, I did school plays and then, you know, everyone knows it's probably not the most um, sustainable career uh, being an actor. So I uh, finished school, I didn't pursue it, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I did an arts degree and just did all these different subjects. I did like journalism and business and psychology and English. And, um, and after, after a year, I realized that I just really wanted to try acting. So I figured I'd audition for QUT, which is where I'm like a really, really quality course. It's like NIDA yep, or Whopper yep. or VCA. Yep, yep. And um, yeah, got in. And uh, so that would begin my, you know, next three years of studying acting and, and I realized the moment I walked in there, I was like, this is what I want to do. So, no, unreal, man. Unreal. Yeah, so that's where we, that's what got me going, I guess. Yeah. 
So the early 2000s was when you really kind of got into a few roles. I know you were in a Danny Deck Chair, um, which was one of your first. And then, what, a couple episodes of All Saints. Um, there was another one. Was it, sea, was it Sea Patrol that you did an episode in or? No, uh, not Sea Patrol. God, I can't remember. Everyone's been on Home and Away. Everyone's been on All Saints. Oh, that's sorry. Sorry, 10 Everyone. episodes of Home and Away. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I, think, I think this one knows a bit more about your career than you do at this point, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it was 20 years ago. Um, yeah, no, fair call, man. Yeah, no, Home and Away was fun. I um, I got I had a fight with Chris Hemsworth. Um, I, <laughs> I was, yeah, I was the ex-boyfriend of Chris Hemsworth's wife oh, wow. and i turned up i turned up into town and and uh i was a low-grade kind of marijuana dealer <laughs> and um and i ended up smoking a joint and um having a psychopathic episode <laughs> and um and locking her up in the house and going going just go full crazy yeah. and and thor himself was bashing on the door trying to get in oh, and save his wife shit. From the, sounds, from the crazy, like a, crazy guy that smoked the joint. It sounds like a Tuesday in Byron, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, maybe uh, maybe if Chris can make it to the to the Marvel universe, maybe I can yep. too one day. We'll see. Yeah. No, well, we hope we'd love to see it. We'd love to see it. So you went from Home and Away, and then, you know, of course, we're going to ask you. You've landed one of the biggest roles of your career, which I'm guessing half the world has seen. Playing Carl Williams in Underbelly. How, how did you? How did you get that role? What did your agent say to you about the role? Or you know, what what was the process of obtaining such a you know iconic role, especially with Australian history? Like all of us people in Melbourne, especially know about Carl Williams. How did how did they approach you to to progress and move forward into that role? It's pretty. I'm pretty bloody lucky, really. <laughs> I'd say just because I look like the guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the, gen the general process with casting in Australia is, you know, there's there's a production that gets greenlit, and then there's a casting director is employed, and then the casting director sends out a brief to all the acting agents, yep. and all the acting agents then submit their their talent, saying I think Guyton would be good for this role. And then they either say, yes, we'll see him or not. And then you go in and do an audition. So in terms of the audition for Underbelly, for Carl Williams, I, I was from Brisbane, so I didn't even know who he was. Yeah, okay. Um, and the audition scene was set at the Crown Casino. So I turned oh, wow. up in a suit. So I turned up for my audition in a suit, like all, yep. you know, like Robert De Niro in casino kind of style. Um, and, uh, <laughs> Good fella. Good fella. <laughs> Yeah, and Anne Robinson, who's the casting director at Mullen, and she's like, um, he's a bit, he's a bit scruffy. This guy, maybe take your shirt out and you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. out a bit. I mean, I had looked, I had looked him up on the internet I, because I think we did have the internet back then, um, and you know, I had, I did have an idea of what was going on, but uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, I did the audition well enough, obviously, and um, yep got the job and then um the day i got the job i went and bought a six pack of donuts and um <laughs> and, a, and a carton of beer and and, and got busy <laughs> was it like uh, was it one of those things where it's like right i kind of look like the guy now i need to stack the, the the weight on so i can actually look like the guy absolutely yeah it was, um, <laughs> it was a fun process i actually went to see a nutritionist uh, wow and sh and she was uh she was a bit perplexed. She's like, normally people come here to uh, learn how to lose weight, not how to put yeah. weight on. Yeah, yeah. Um, you reverse Christian bailing her, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this was 20 years ago when people were, weren't as, you know, educated, I guess, in nutrition and stuff. And, and uh, so what was fascinating was she's like, uh, drink lots of fruit juice. Because yeah, it's, right? it's just full of sugar. It's full of yeah, yeah, fructose, yeah, yeah. you know. But it's a natural sugar, so it's going to be better for you than than kind of saturated fats like eating lots of pizza and burgers and stuff like that. So I just went to Boost Juice and just like, and they've even got a calorie count next to all their drinks. Well, they did back in the day. 
And I just say, give me that one with the 5,000 calories. I want that one every day. I, I got to say, man, you're a good looking rooster. So when I saw you jump on, uh, when, you, when I saw you jump into that, that role and saw how, how big you'd gotten, I was like, whoa, there's some padding there or there's some like Colin Farrell playing the penguin going on here or what's going on? <laughs> how much VB did you drink? Uh, it was crown lager back then. Oh, uh, yeah, no, fair the enough. Crownies, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, anyway, fair um, enough. Uh, up and goes are good too. They're a good tip if anyone Yeah, I've got six in the fridge. I've got six in the fridge. Yeah, yeah he's, he's <laughs> like you can call I'm, I'm, all, I'm also like, on the <laughs> shit. So you actually I'm, got I'm, a – you got a – Just um, one more thing on the on the weight right. stuff. Like I've, I've played Carl three times now. Like there yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there was the mock the mock bell one and um uh and then informer for yes. uh, 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 Nicola Gobbo. Um and so, you know, first time I was twenty seven, then I was thirty two and then the last time I was like thirty eight. And uh, oh, wow. it's a lot it's a lot harder to get off when you're thirty. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Sorry, I've been watching The Office recently. Steve Carell, that's what she said after everything. Um, <laughs> what What was it like, though, playing a role such as Carl Williams, where you won most outstanding – sorry, you won the most outstanding actor award? I mean, that would have been – that's a hell of an accomplishment. Like, Oh, it's huge. It's, you know, it's, it's one of the – biggest things I've ever done in my life and yeah. like you know awards are awards are nice you know they're not the end be all and end all um yep yep uh but but it certainly is especially the AFI which is now the the actors yes, um, yes uh you know that's that's voted by it's not like a logo where it's most popular it's this is you know voted by industry industry yeah. professionals and stuff yeah so yeah it, it it you know it, we're very we're very vulnerable and insecure creatures, us actors, us schmackers, mm-hmm. and um, it's nice to kind of have that that uh, that validation, that kind of that oh, validation. Yeah. That's the word. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and also, it just helps in getting more work. So no, uh, absolutely, like, absolutely. Lots of offers came in after that, so it was really well. You've really done great. you've you've done a lot since. Um, I mean, um, the um, House Husbands obviously was that springs to mind. I mean, that was one of the most watched Australian TV dramas in Australian history. Um, really? That's good to know. I didn't yeah, know, no, I know it, it was popular. One no, it, awards, it, mate, it's, 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 it's up there. It's definitely up there. Oh, great. And it, it, it's, on, it's on, what's it called? Uh, yeah. Stan. It's on Stan. Oh, cool. Uh, you've, well, maybe yeah, I'm due for some residuals. <laughs> oh, 100%. Oh, you've got to bring up the bloke that directed it, mate. You've got to, you've got to be getting rewarded for that. But um, oh, so you friends with great. Yeah, sorry, mate. Go. Oh no, sorry, no. Um, please continue. Just yeah, tell us about house husbands and you know your your you, um you know how you went on that and you know are there any standouts from that from that TV series and look, it was just a lot of fun because yeah. um Gary Sweet, Reese Muldoon, Thraster Annie and I we just we got along really well and then obviously um uh, Julia and um, Natalie Saliba and um, uh, to me, Morris, sorry. Um, uh, you know, and there's always supporting cast too. Everyone, it was just, it was just a party. We just had a yeah, really man. fun time all the time. And it was, the way it was produced, it was, you know, it, well, what was the term? I think they came up with a dramedy. You know, it's not, dramedy, it's not a yeah, comedy. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a drama. It's not a soap opera either. It was just like, it had, it had elements of everything. So you could, you could do some serious acting and then, then you could really piss about and have a lot of fun as well. And, Absolutely. You know, do the overacting with, you know, girly squeals and stuff like that. And, <laughs> um, uh, so, look, that was that was fun too. Yeah, we just – it was just a really lucky opportunity to be yep. to be, to be cast in that. And that's what uh, brought me to Melbourne um, permanently. I met my wife there and when I was shooting oh, well. my husband. And, Congratulations. And, uh, and then I – stayed so yeah. yeah did you give uh did you give faris any tips about playing uh in underbelly season three or uh <laughs> no he'd already done that um i didn't know him then but um he did a brilliant job obviously um 
So oh shit, yeah, that's right. That was released in 2010. Sorry, mate. Yes, yes, yes. No, you're right. Um, but oh, great. Man. How loud's that? Can't hear it. Can't, we can't hear anything, mate. We can only hear oh, you. Oh, good. We can only hear <laughs> oh, you. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, Is someone doing a burnout on a Vespa or something? <laughs> no, no, it's from some construction or something. Anyway, um, for us, for us, yeah, I don't know. What were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. I missed. I, I got the dates mixed up. I thought. Um, I thought season three was aligned with 2012 when you started House Husbands. So no, that's that's on me. Hey, tell me, I'm I'm really curious because um, obviously Carl Williams is such an iconic character that you played. Um, you know, to this day, every time I see your face pop up on my TV, I'm like, hey, it's Carl Williams. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you get that a lot from people still to this point when 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 you're around. Um, but what was it like playing Carl? Like, did you get the opportunity to talk to anyone involved with that that world? Because that was a pretty severe world. Yeah, yeah. Look, we were really lucky because we had the Victorian police, we had VicPol involved um, yeah, yeah. from the start. And so we got access to a lot of the detectives from the, from the Piranha Task Force. Um, oh, wow. And yeah, so I, um, I got to talk to them extensively about their experience with Carl. Um, I wasn't allowed to meet him. Um, yep, yep. And I'm actually really glad I did it. In mm -hmm. the end, because um, look, at the end of the day, like it's still a character. It's still a it's still a dramatization. Yeah. Nothing's nothing's ever perfectly true. Like um, so, it's 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 very heavily based on him. But the script isn't exactly exactly. Nothing can be exactly true. Of course, yeah, yeah. Um, so it does re does call for some of your own interpretation. Mm -hmm. But. Um, I also met quite a few colourful characters um, out and about, you know, in the in in the bars and stuff of Melbourne when while we yep. were shooting, and um, people would come up and introduce me and invite me into the toilet, perhaps. And um, <laughs> yep, yep. There's <laughs> that scene on some, some of their wares. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, look. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. What else? Roberta, Roberta tried to track me down quite a few times, and did she really? Um, wow. So did Nick Gatto, but I managed to avoid them for quite a while. So um, when you when you say they tried to track you down, was it like ferocious, or was it a message on on your phone, or what? What was? What would? Can you give no, us a bit more? No, no, just, oh, well, she came to set one morning. Um, oh wow! She found out where we were shooting, and she came to set. Um, but Cat Stewart and I, I think she was trying to meet Cat, the okay. lady. Cat okay. Stewart, the lady playing Roberta. Um, yep, yep. But we were we were away. At another location shooting, so they, she missed us, and they, you know, security took her away. But um, oh, look, I don't think she had any, any, any problem with us. She just wanted to meet yep. us and say hello. And yep, yep. Um, but we just didn't want to get too close to that. Yeah, stuff. of course. You've got to, you no, to keep absolutely. yourself separate. Yeah. Look, I yeah. look on the, on the note of getting too close to it. Um, <laughs> uh, I was telling Lockie before we started recording the interview. Um, I was actually working uh, on Ligon street in carlton at the starbucks across the road from la pochetta's the day that benji veneman was shot i was actually at work wow. yeah. the day yeah. it all happened and that was about as close as i wanted to get to yeah, it. <laughs> um, but yeah like it was it was crazy down here in melbourne because obviously then there was the court case because it couldn't be broadcast down here in victoria while while carl williams was going through his criminal trial because they didn't want it to prejudice the the jury and all that kind of stuff so it must have it must have made for an interesting uh, telling for you because not only did it come out nationally except Victoria and you kind of, you know, burst onto everybody's scenes really quickly, but then it came out again in Victoria a year later. It was like, oh, me all over the place again. Like, did that have any benefits for your, your acting career moving forward or was it just much of the same? Oh, look, it's, it's all such a whirlwind. <laughs> yeah. um, but the, back to your, your 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 little story on Ligon Street. I mean, that's that's the reason why it was so successful. Um, yeah. Especially in Victoria, because everyone has a story. Yeah. Everyone yeah. I meet in it's Melbourne. So out in the open. Yeah. Like yeah. my my dog's previous owner's flatmate, you know, was was in this <laughs> pub when so and so was shot. And, you know, my my uncle used to go to the races with so and so, or like yeah, like yeah. I went to school with this kid's son and. Um, you know, everybody, you know, so many people have told me that they were at Auskick the day that 
you know, um, Moran, yeah, Moran's were shot, and um, yep, yep. so uh, yeah, like, biggest uh, hit crowd Mel- in history. Melbourne, right I, Melbourne <laughs> I grew oh, up geez. with it on the front page, yeah, yep. every, every day, and these guys were like celebrities, they were their own type of celebrity. Mm. It, it was, you know, it was a bit exciting to know know someone or be a bit yeah, part of it, or yeah, be yep. able to say I was across the road when so and so was shot because everyone knew who these people were. Yeah, um, yeah. I wouldn't even know who half the actors are these days, but everyone knows who the gangsters are. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, look, it 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 changed my life that show, and uh, for, for many good things and and bad things. You know, the the the, pop, the notoriety was 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 hard at times. I, I had yep, yep. I, I lived in Bondi at the time, and I had I mean, you know, I was in Bondi, but I I had paparazzi outside my door for three or four months and every wow. day they'd just be, be there and they'd just follow me everywhere and people are like, well, don't live in Bondi. I'm like, well, fair enough, but, you know, like, I'm just going to get a coffee. You know? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, you can't really go anywhere or do anywhere. The, the fame was pretty full on. And mm. um, I called it the Crows because um, you just, anywhere I walk, you just hear, cow, cow. Oh, 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 man. It's like the it's like the bloody seagull from Nemo. Mine, yeah. mine, <laughs> mine. mine. Yeah, so what? Yeah. So what? So Guyton, what was it like stepping back into that role in um, Fat Tony and Co. And then back in um, in former three hundred three A. So you've obviously had the hype around did, Underbelly, and then yeah. you've had to go through it all again. How did um Lev Hill put it really well? He played Jason Moran. Um, yep. it was like. It's like putting on an old, really old pair of, of old underwear you know, mm. that you haven't worn for a few years. Like it felt <laughs> felt really familiar, and but just a bit, just a bit off. Like it just felt like. Just, I remember just, this sweaty <laughs> sensation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Lockie's, then, Lockie's laughing. <laughs> Sorry, Lockie's oh. laughing because he wears old underwear quite frequently. Oh. <laughs> Oh, well, then God. you know what I'm talking about, mate. You, you oh, know what I'm talking about. Hey, it's, yeah. you, know, you can't buy that comfort, mate. Once you've worn in, you don't need to leave it. You don't need to change. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I, I keep laughing. Sorry, mate. <laughs> okay. um, oh, but wow. yeah. It was exciting. We've all, we've all enjoyed you watching play such a prolific character in Australian history and um, yeah, like it's a, it's a, uh, it's, it's unreal what you've done. But right, you've question, d- sorry, sorry, question for you. Kate yep. Winslow, Judy Davis, Hugo Weaving, Liam Hemsworth. What is it like working with a cast list like that? That is insanity. That's massive, man. Yeah, that was, um, well, Sarah Snook and, um, you know, uh, uh, Terry Fox and, uh, yep. Alison White and Shay Jacobson and Rebecca Gibney and, um, gosh, there were many others in there too. Like it was, uh, mm. it was just it was a dream come true. Um, and to especially have scenes with Kate Winslet, like just yeah, me man. and her. I just I, I did a scene with just me and her. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I, I was just sitting there going, if, if when I graduated from acting school, I was just a little twenty-one-year-old, yeah, bright-faced, wishy-tailed, brizzy boy. If someone yep. had said. One one day you're going to act with Kate Winslet. I would have just slapped him in the face. Like, oh, right. did she? Um, did did she ask no. you to draw her like one of your French girls? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Um, but... <laughs> no, she didn't ask you that. But she she is a, a bloody legend. Like she swore yeah. like a trooper. She wasn't. She wasn't. Special in any way, like she yeah, just yeah. she she. Some nights she just stayed and slept in um slept in her trailer because sometimes we we're out, you know, in regional rural areas. She didn't yep, she yep. didn't need to go back to her hotel or anything. She's like, oh, I'll just sleep here. Um, yeah, she wasn't wasn't too too big for anyone. She was uh, she was really lovely. Oh, it's unreal, man. Um, awesome. One more. And quick Judy quick. Davis. Judy Sorry. Davis was funny. Yeah, actually. tell us. Um, Cause she's and she's kind of a bit the opposite. She was she was very uptight and very kept to herself. And um, you know, uh, 
I my very first scene, I was terrified, but mm-hmm. I was very lucky that all I had to do was be asleep. So it was very very convenient way to kind of ease my way in. I just had to be asleep yep, yep, in this, yep. this bed in the background, and and uh, I I tried. It was just Judy and I, and we had to be sitting there together for a while while they fiddled with lights and stuff. And so I, I tried out a joke. I was like, I, I rehearsed this scene for eight hours last night, and um, and I don't think she got it. I don't think. Did you guys get that joke just then? No. <laughs> That's okay, that so I had to be. Out. I had to be asleep, right? I was oh, sleeping. And me, so I, and I rehearsed this for eight hours last night. Um, I mean, oh, I, 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 yeah, I crack nah. a lot of jokes. I crack a lot of jokes and they don't, no one gets them. So, oh, I, I mean, maybe, maybe it was me. Maybe it was me, not her. Okay. But, uh, so, Guyton, what's your yeah. best joke that you've got? So we, just, just for reference, we, uh, we end every episode. Because we have like a post credits joke, because we called the post credits show. You got to do something after the credits, right? Right. And we right. have a stupid dad joke that we do at the end of every single episode. So tell us your best dad joke. Best dad joke. Uh, well, my seven year old's got a good knock knock one at the moment. Yeah. What do you got, um, man? Okay. Uh, knock knock. Who's there? Europe. Europe who? <laughs> no, you? Europe who? <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> All right. I've got one for you, Gordon. Yeah. Knock, knock. Who's there? Arch. Arch who? Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man, that's now, rubbish. I'm a that's... big fan. I went through a stage where I was really big on pirate jokes and really big on, like, name jokes. Like, oh, give us one. Give like, us one, man. Like, what do you call a girl with one leg shorter than the other? Eileen. What? What do you what do you call a girl? What do you call a girl standing in the middle of a tennis court? What? A net. A net. Um, what do you call a girl who's like standing with one leg either side of like a ravine? What? Uh, Brid- Bridget. Um, what do you call a guy sitting sitting on his um knees? What? Meal. <laughs> what do you call? What do you call a guy with no arms and no legs in the ocean? What? Bob. Bob. Um, what do you call? What do you call a guy with his head stuck in a hole? What? what Warren. Um, what? What Rabbit Warren. I don't know. There's, there's, oh, there's, there's, yeah. What do you call a guy standing in a hole? What? Bill. What do you call? Um, anyway, they go. There's so many. Oh my God. What do you call a guy laying on the ground? What Matt? Um, <laughs> anyway, oh, man, oh my like fucking god, oh, bro! That's fantastic. <laughs> hey, um, we've also been we've been following your Instagram, your TikToks. Um, you seem to be like a bit of a master chef, as well. Yeah. Has that has that come from moving over to Italy, or were you a massive cook fan back in Oz? I've always been a keen foodie. Yeah, um, yeah, and. And I've always liked cooking, but I think I think this happened to a lot of people during, especially everyone, a lot of people in Melbourne mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. during lock, lockdown. I I reckon I became the best cook in London in Melbourne uh, during lockdown. I love um, that. And, I was locked down in Melbourne, but I became the best cook in London. Yeah, no, nah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, 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 sorry, I meant to say <laughs> Melbourne. Um, yeah, I, I just did a I did a lot of cooking, and my uh, our neighbours who are some of our best friends. Um, yep. We got together. Well, we didn't physically get together, but we we got a jar and we put all countries, we were all the countries of the of the world into a jar. And each week we'd pick a country out, and, and I'd cook for Friday, and he'd cook for Saturday, or vice versa. And so I started cooking like Moroccan food and Indian food wow. and like yeah, wow. Swedish Oof. Swedish food, and you're like, it was just really fun to research, and then yeah, man, yeah, yeah, and then head to the head to the Preston markets, and then you know, um, and uh, yeah, and and just learn, you learn a lot, just deep dive into YouTube and just go for it. Yeah, you really love so, Preston, do you? <laughs> well, I mean, I live in Ivanhoe, so well, I, oh, I, did live in I, Ivanhoe. I went to Ivanhoe Grammar as a kid. Oh right, oh yeah. cool, yeah. yeah. Um, didn't do well. Go down obviously, didn't, didn't, obviously, didn't, there, but... uh, obviously didn't graduate. So yeah, don't, don't send them there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, 
this is this is something I know that you're you've, you're it's very close to your chest. You've got your you've got a charity that you sponsor, Polished Man. Um, are you able to share just a little bit how you got involved with this charity? You know, why did it reach out to yourself? And tell us a bit about the tell, charity. Tell us a bit about the charity, if you don't mind. Yeah. Oh look, yeah. Well, there's there's two that I'm an ambassador for. Oh, okay. Right? Sorry, oh, mate. Yep. Polished Man, and the other one's Heart Kids. Heart um, Kids, yeah. Probably more. Probably more active with heart kids now. Okay. Um, yep. But po Polish men, fantastic. It's um, it's, it was um, uh, started. Uh, oh god, I just got his surname. Elliot. Um. Uh, 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 how about that? <laughs> anyway. No, no, you're right. Elliot. He's a good. El Elliot's a good bloke. Elliot. We'll edit that out. Elliot. Elliot's Elliot. a good bloke. Um, it'll come to me. Um, look. It's basically to stop violence and abuse to children. Um, yeah, yeah. And this guy was in, he was in Thailand and he was doing some work with some NGOs and, and the, the, he was in a slum and this little girl um, came up and asked him if she could paint, paint his nails. Um, and, and that just kind of really moved him. And so he decided that um, a great way to, to start a conversation about child abuse would be to have one fingernail painted. Um, especially yeah. when it started like six or seven years ago, it was, you know, it was a bit more taboo for men to be, um, you know, polishing their nails. Um, and so, sure, you can, like raising money is great. You know, you can, you can go to help many, many things and, and do lots of good. But Absolutely. I think a lot of, a lot of the issues in, a lot of the trouble with a lot of the issues in, in, in life and modern society is, is um, the lack of communication. And yes, especially yep. when there's abuse happening in the domestic household. Um, and so if you have a, a painted nail and you're at the pub or whatever, your mate's like, what's that about? And you're like, well, it's about child abuse. And, um, yep. and, I, and we need to talk about it more because it just becomes a bit taboo. And if you might, you might notice something that you think's a bit off and, and not mention it, but if if everyone's talking about it a lot more, then yeah, you man. won't be as scared to kind of <clears throat> say something. Um, and the other one is Heart Kids. Uh, my cousin um, Mel. It's it basically Heart Kids is, provides assistance and money for um, for kids and families who have CHD, which is congenital heart disease. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so my my cousin um, tragically lost her little boy, uh, Mikey. Uh, about uh, seven years ago um, to CHD. And so it is something that's, no pun intended, very close to my heart. No, of course. And, um, of course. and yeah, they, it's kind of like McDonald's, Ronald McDonald House, you know, they just provide yep. a lot of assistance. But it's very expensive to, to be, have children in hospital for months on end, you know, while they're receiving treatment. Yep. And a lot of regional families have to find accommodation, et cetera, and all that stuff. So, um, and also going towards finding a cure and prevention and all that stuff. Um, yep, so yep. Yeah, yes. Uh, heart, heart kids is another really thing, great thing that's um, very close <clears> to my heart as well. No, that's yeah. beautiful, man. So let's put a shout out. Polished man and heart kids. Um, mate, they're very blessed to have an ambassador such as yourself to be, you know, associated with both those foundations. Um, yeah, man. That's, that's uh, Yeah, it's amazing what you do for them. Cheers. Um, Cheers. We've got um, Casa Voice. Yeah, Casa <laughs> Voice. Can you, can you explain house. what's going on in your house? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know I live in Italy, right? Yes, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the reasons why we, we're here is because I kind of can, because, well, my wife's, my wife's a dual citizen. She's yeah, yeah. an Italian Australian. Um, and so she's got a passport, and now all the kids have their passports. And because I'm married to her, I can come too. Um, so she's got a job. She's a school teacher. She's got a job uh, teaching at an international school here. And ever since lockdown, uh, look, I don't really do a lot of acting anymore. I'm still auditioning. It's just it's really starting to slow down. Mm -hmm. But I've always been a voice artist. I always do voiceovers for radio yeah, and our commercials and TV commercials. And, and so when lockdown happened, everyone had to set up their own studios in their own house. Um, and so I was doing them from my wardrobe and 
and uh, got all the gear and stuff and set up. It was going really well. And then once we all came out of it, a lot of the, the big studios were like, no, don't come in, just do it from home. So wow. I figured like, well, I can just keep doing my work from my wardrobe in Italy, can't I? Um, so, you know, I was up at 4.30 this morning uh, doing a job. Yep. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's not, not the funnest thing to do, but... I've now got the rest of the day off, and yeah, I'm yeah. going to go to the beach, what go to the beach, and have a morning? sleep on the beach. Well, uh, you're not in Byron, mate. You can't do that. Eh? <laughs> um, this morning, I was doing a ad for Jamoan's latest show at the Crown at the Palms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I also did some. I I'm do regular promotions for Par- Paramount Plus. Um, so I was yeah nice. doing some stuff oh. for them too. Oh, all right. we're going to keep we're going to keep a listen out for them because we're both Paramount Plus members and we vigorously watch every single thing that basically gets released on there. So I think you'll you'll only hear the ads on Channel Ten, I think, because right. uh, Paramount oh. owns Channel Ten. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, so yeah what's, um, what's next? What are you doing now? What's uh, you got anything coming up? You want to tell us about? Um, oh, yeah, I did a couple of things before we left. Uh, there's a film called Nut Farm, um, which yes. is uh, starring, Art starring Art, 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 Art. Is that that one? Yep, yep, yep. Um, it's a quirky, quirky, crazy little comedy with some silly characters. Um, uh, so I play Farmer D, who owns um, D's Nuts. Uh, he's a macadamia farmer, um, and uh, <laughs> so there's a. There's a shit ton of nut of nut puns, um, and that shit only appeals to people our age too. That's, yeah. oh, that's, yeah. that's fucking funny, man. You cannot. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, um, yeah. No, there's some really good jokes in there, and ours is yeah, ours is great in it. He was, he was so nervous. He was so nervous. He's never acted before, but I was, I was like, it's, you act every time you get on stage, mate. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's a performance, you know. Um, Madeline West is in it, and she's fantastic. Roy Billing, and um, you know, a bunch of oh, other great okay. actors too. So, yeah, that's I think that hits cinemas in middle of March, March 14th, or something like that. All right. Um, <clears throat> and I have a tiny, tiny part in um, in a new night, Channel 9 series. Um, I can't even remember what it's called. I think they changed the name. Um, <laughs> Leanna Walsman. Leanna Walsman's the lead. I was in a TV series, but sorry, guys. I don't know what the fuck it was called. Well, it was two years ago. You know, I just moved on. I was only there for two days. Uh, how, how long? <laughs> two years ago. Yeah. I was only no, how... on set for two days. Oh, and it was okay. two years no, that's ago. fair enough. Yeah. Um, um, okay. So what? What's well, What's coming out in March? I want everyone to know. Nut Farm. Go, nut go Farm. see it in cinemas. Yeah. March fourteenth. All right. We're going to see the Nut Farm. All right. Have your phone ready. We'll be there. Right, we'll, be, we'll be facetiming okay. you that night. All right. <laughs> okay. Give me some yeah. warning. <laughs> Are you going to be drinking that night or what? <laughs> Well, you keep forgetting that I'm in Italy, so like. Yeah, no, we we thought you might have a glass of red. I know it, what is it, ten thirty a.m. Yeah. in the morning. It's yeah, it's almost eleven. Yeah, eleven a.m. Yeah, right. um, Here you go. Cheers to yeah. that. Go but on. it's not it's not unusual to see people like having mm. a glass of wine or a beer at ten o'clock. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, yeah. But the difference is they don't get drunk; they just have one drink and then. Yeah, yeah they're, they're and smart. They're not. Flat. They're not a bunch of skippy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey Guyton, it's been a real pleasure talking to you. Um, we've really enjoyed getting pleasure, to know you a little bit better and 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 getting to know a bit more about your background and and what it uh, what what you've managed to achieve throughout your career. We're really stoked to see you in Nut Farm. Um, we're stoked to see you when you finally hit your uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Absolutely, yeah. man. When you're there, remember yeah. us. Um, we'll be expecting you and Hemsworth to rock up down the road and uh, do an in-person podcast sometime as the two biggest superstars <laughs> in the world. Can't wait. No. Yeah, uh, me and Hemdoggy just, just just chewing the fat. Yeah. When you're back in Melbourne, let us know. We'll go for a beer at uh, the Carnegie Hotel in uh, Carnegie. Sounds good. Yeah, that'd be really well, fun. Thank you. Awesome. Absolute pleasure, Guy. And thank you so much, brother. We love you, man. Thanks, mate. Take Cheers, care. Take care, bro. All right. Out of it, Andrew. Yeah, one time, that. See you later.